Hey, this is Amy Lee from Evanescence, and you're listening to 89FM, The Radio Rock. Fala, galera, beleza? Eu sou o Wendel Corrêa e eu conversei com a Emily, vocalista e líder do Evanescence, eles que vão lançar um novo trabalho, um novo álbum chamado The Bitter Truth, falou um pouco sobre esse novo trabalho, falou também sobre a música nova Use My Voice, sobre o Brasil, entre várias outras curiosidades, nessa entrevista exclusiva para 89, a Rádio Rock. Hi, Amy. Good, hi. So, how are you on this quarantine, this 2020, crazy 2020? Sure has been crazy, just everywhere, huh? I'm okay. I am alive, and we are healthy, um, and we have a lot to be grateful for, um, especially after this weekend. So, I'm doing good. <laughs> yeah, talk about this weekend, you released the song, Use Your Voice. Now the American election is over. And how do you feel about that, doing this song, the campaign to people for vote? How do you feel about, about that? Um, I I feel proud. I, I feel proud um, of my country in this moment. It's um, it's been a minute. So um, to to be to have been any small part in helping encourage people and empower people and motivate people to use their voices and and help us to um, move forward uh, into a better future. I'm just so grateful to have been any tiny part of that. Yeah. And talk about your own voice, your singer voice. You have a very unique voice when you start singing. Everyone knows that is Emily. How do you take care of your voice? You know, I drink a lot of tea. I mean, it's funny. Really, the best thing for your voice is getting enough sleep. And um, this has been a weird time. I have a six-year-old, too. So um, a lot of nights we've been getting less sleep for multiple reasons. Stress just being one of them and anxiety. <laughs> But... Um, Also, you know, just having a kid and, and being around each other so much. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know. I, I try to take care of it the best I can. Thank you for the compliment. But I'm not always a good girl when it comes to that. But it's a very beautiful voice. <laughs> and, and, and also know this song, use your voice as a, some female voice and appear on the video as well. How do you connect with Dan? Do you feel like another generation than Dan? Than, than How do you feel about that? I... I feel grateful to have such badass friends. Um, everybody that, that helped out on that song, um, everyone that was a part of it, they were all um, my friends in real life. Um, and just calling on my sisters, literally my sisters are on there, but calling on my girls, um, the strong women in my life, many of them are, are beautiful singers and uh, well-respected women in rock and beyond. Um, so uh, I don't know. I'm just grateful for being able to do that, being able to call out and have um, people that want to support. I think something that's really cool about um, what we can do with this moment is the truth that women want to support women for the most part. That has been the case, you know, in the rock world as long as I've been in it. We want each other there. We want to support each other. We want to have each other's backs and we want there to be more of us. So um, to be able to put that in itself into uh, a song I'm, I'm just really proud of and grateful for. Do you think it's getting better if the, the women is getting as right as, as it should be? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, you know, it's, it's a, I don't know, it's a long, slow road for all change. Um, but just in my time, since uh, a very masculine moment in rock in the, um, early 2000s to now, I've seen huge change um, on and off stage from people working in the live industry and the music industry in general uh, to women in bands and um, just taking part in every part of it and feeling that um, acceptance and support is definitely more than it was. Um, so yeah, I'm, that's awesome and inspiring too. And talking about the new album, The Bitter Truth, what can you tell for us about it? Is it already finished? Almost, we're, we're right in the, the last part. So just sort of sealing it up now, I'll be back in uh, the studio singing today. Um, but there's not very much more to sing. I'm about there. Um, and then we're just doing some more final touches. So um, it won't be long. I think we're going to release another song uh, in the next couple of weeks. Do you already know how many tracks is it going to have? Anything you can tell for us? Uh, I can't tell you yet. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Why do you choose the name The Bitter Truth before even the songs were finished? You know, picking an album title is strangely one of the elements of making an album that's always come pretty easily um, for me and for us as a band. Uh, it's just something that you know. 
um, at some point during the making of the record, usually towards the beginning of it, I feel like I have a clue as to what we're aiming for and what that little thing is, what, what that summary is of the feeling that we kind of want to achieve. I remember that moment with the open door, just having a click and we were just had only probably written four songs for the album. Kind of the same thing with this one, when um, we were putting out Wasted on You first and we kind of needed an album title um, to go forward. Um, that line, you know, is a lyric from the song and so much of this album is about the truth, reality, you know, your real self, um, without all the makeup, without all the little lies we tell ourselves to get through the day, just the real clear truth. Um, there's something about that right now that I feel like we need so badly. Everyone's craving just to face the truth. Um, we've been through a lot of stuff, um, as humans in, in our band, I lost my brother a couple of years ago. Grief has um, been something that's really taken um, a role in the music. Um, and the thing about that is you can't, you don't want to just forget about it. You don't want to just let go of what you've lost. We need to face it to continue the love and also in order to ever get to a better place. And I think, you know, all over the world, we can admit we're in a, in a hurt place right now. Um, in order to ever make it through to a better place, we have to first accept what we're going through right now and the reality of now so that we can, you know, make changes and, and get out of it. You got to grieve before you can heal. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I mean, we have to be positive, but also uh, have this, these things that happen with all of us, right? Totally. And talking about Brazil, I believe you already know by now, you have a lot of crazy friends here in Brazil. <laughs> What do yeah, you remember from Brazil? <laughs> the fans. We remember the people more than anything. First of all, it's a beautiful place. One of the things I've missed a lot about this year is uh, traveling. We've just been at the house. Um, and I, I don't know, being able to go to beautiful other countries like um, Brazil is something that we've been so fortunate to be able to do. I don't know that I ever would have been there if it wasn't for Evanescence and, and what's happened for us. Um, and I'm grateful to know it pretty well. Um, we spent a good amount of time in uh, Rio and Alto La Fortaleza. Um, just we've been there enough to know how great it is, how beautiful it is, but more importantly, how special the people are and how um, they've made us feel like we're from there, like we belong there, um, like like we're part of something together. Um, I love it. I can't wait to come back. We love our fans there so much. And you inspire a lot of people, especially the youngest women. Some friends of mine will be crazy when they, they know that I'm interviewing you. That's awesome. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you also have a great life history and a great musician as well. Have you ever thought about writing your own autobiography? Um, yeah, that would be hard. I mean, for a lot of tricky reasons. Um, no, not, not seriously. I journal a lot. And what my place, my outlet really for telling my story is my lyrics. So um, I kind of consider that the best of that. And what changed for best and what changed for worse on these 20 years on the road. Oh, wow. Gosh, so much for the better. Um, as a band, just having the experience, you know, of playing so many shows and growing and congealing together as a group. You know, when we first started out, we were just kids out of high school. And it was really, um, you know, had just been put together because it was just two of us and then three of us. And then it was like, okay, we need a couple more people to, you know, to come in here and, and play these songs. Um, it wasn't like we were some touring band who really knew what we were doing. We were just kids when it all started for us. So we really, I felt like, you know, became a band um, over the years. And with um, Troy and Will and Tim and now Jen um, over this past, you know, decade plus, Jen's been with us for five, but um, the other guys have been us been here more than a decade we really feel um 
it feels so different than it used to feel. We have each other's backs. We are a crew. Um, and that, that inside thing coming first just makes the whole thing stronger and better. Um, very proud of the musicians that um, I stand beside. Any regrets? <laughs> no time for that. Life's too short. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And do you have a favorite song of Evanescence that you say, oh, I'm really proud of that one? That's really hard for me. I feel like they're all like different colors of a full spectrum. I don't think I could pick one song. I, I guess it's a lame answer. No, I love them all. And I have a quick questions I want to do for you. We do on the uh, musicians, we interview on radio station. I think you will enjoy the questions. Okay. Uh, the first music you remember hearing. Whoa, my dad playing the guitar, my dad singing. Uh, I grew up with music in my home. And what instrument did you start with, guitar or piano? Um, piano was first, yeah. And the greatest album of all time, in your opinion? That's so hard. That's really hard. The greatest album of all time, any genre, any anything. Is there one? Can one album sum us up? I don't know, man. <laughs> That's an impossible question. <laughs> If I had to pick one album that I've listened to the most in my life, I might be able to answer that. Um, God, it's between a few. I feel like I have to say, man. <laughs> it's got to be Bjork for me. Just if it's about just like a personal choice of like what I've probably repeated over and over the most in my life. Um, Probably Vespertine, maybe homogenic. I don't know. It's too hard. It, it's, a, <laughs> it's a tough question. I know that. And your favorite songwriter? Ooh, that's tough. Well, right now I'm really digging Bring Me the Horizon. Um, we worked together on a collab recently and it made me dig deeper into their music. I was already a fan, but um, their music, the new album that they just put out, really impressed me. Um, and I was impressed by the song that was brought to me for the collab. Um, from a lyric and, and songwriting point of view, um, especially being in the middle of, of writing my own music um, and oftentimes, you know, just slamming my head against the wall. Um, it was really refreshing to hear something that someone else did and, and see so much beauty in it. Um, so that's what I'm into right now. And you are not going to suing them anymore, right? <laughs> I never sued them. That was a little bit <laughs> over dramatically told. <laughs> And the most underrated band of all time, in your opinion? Viridia. Um, my girl, Dina Jacob, um, she helped me write Use My Voice. Um, their band is incredible, and they are definitely still a small band. I hope that they make it. They have so many good songs. They live here in Nashville, um, so we're neighbors and friends. Yeah, I'm going to hear that. And your Saturday Night Party song? Saturday Night Party song? Ooh, what was it this weekend? There's a lot of rage against the machine for me this weekend. <laughs> It's kind of a raging party. Like, ah, fight the power. Yeah. Great <laughs> stuff. And the last one, the song that, that makes you cry. I don't know. I, I, I was working on this playlist just like for inspiration about the whole situation um, with the election and voting and everything over the last week. And um, a song that was really speaking to me and make me feel hard um, is Change is Gonna Come by Sam Cooke. Great song. Thanks so much for our time, Amy. I really appreciate that. Thank you. I appreciate it too. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you in Brazil again. Me too. See ya. 89. A Rádio Rock.